Let's diffuse the lighting from the Godox MF12 Twin Macro Flash so we can take it from this to this. So following on from the series of videos about the Godox MF12 Twin Macro Flash, we are now going to diffuse the light so it looks very, very nice and can replace my Young Nuo Twin Macro Flash. So for any of you that are waiting for new episodes of Macro Monday, let me just bring up on an update on that. The first six episodes were basically filmed back to back when the insects were out and about and running around. It's now November here in the UK, and unfortunately the insects are all hibernating. So I've got to try and figure out what I can photograph, but not disturb. So I'm not going to go into the garden and disturb hibernating insects just for a video. So Macro Mondays will come as and when I manage to get a subject to photograph for those episodes. But what we want to do now is want to break down this rig. This is my current rig that I use for all my macro photography. We have the Canon EOS R with the battery pack. We have the lower 100mm macro lens on there. And we have the Yongnuo YN24EX Twin Macro Flash. And on that I have the heads that are mounted onto small rig arms and I have a Crafty Bells diffuser. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to update my setup because I want to start using the Godox Twin Macro Flash. Just works a lot better with my EOS R, it's newer. This one is starting to fail, it keeps missing shots from time to time. I'd say one in three shots it misses. The, uh, the Godox hasn't missed a beat so we're now going to replace the uh, Young Nuo with the Godox. I'm going to show you how I'm going to build the rig so that I get the most out of that system. There's a link in the description for all of the accessories I'm using to create this setup. The first thing we need to do is to strip this down. We are going to be using the Crafty Bells bonnet. On the Young Nuo, we have standard code shoe uh, fittings here so that the small rig arms go onto there. That pushes the light back away from the diffuser because if your heads are too close to the diffuser, you get hot spots and you can see that in your subject's eyes. With the Godox, we don't need those so we can get rid of them. We do need, however, our step up and step down rings. So we're going to have to deal with that first. So this is how we get the bonnet diffuser to fit onto a twin macro flash. It's simply step up rings that are glued to the front of the rig. So let's get that off and we're going to transfer it over to the new one. Right, those are off. That's our old ring ad adapter. That's going to go into storage in case we ever need the flash in the future for any sort of testing. So if you're paying attention and you're following along, I'm going to tell you what you need to create this particular part of the setup. And this is a 77 millimeter to 82 step up ring that then goes to 82 to 72. So basically you're stepping up and down. Okay, that extends it out beyond the adapter. We then go back to another 77 to 82 step up ring. And then we go to an 82 to 77 step down ring. Then we have a 77 to 72 step down ring. And then a 72 to 67 millimeter step down ring. That is it, the setup for that. Uh, generally speaking, you can buy the step up and step down ring sets, the whole lot. And I generally just bought two of them and then just picked the ones that I needed. This is what makes the rig work, okay? You might be wondering why I'm getting this off. My filter is stuck to the 67 millimeter adapter for the Young Nuo. And behind there, I have a little uh, piece of plastic that Jason Canning made that stops the rig from twisting. That is not gonna be able to transfer over because it's not compatible with the Godox. But luckily for me, I have another UV filter. So I don't need to try and get that one off. Okay, we can put our adapter on there now because this one doesn't have that little piece of plastic that Jason Cannon made. Brilliant little piece of plastic that is. It just stops the whole lot from twisting. Brilliant. So here is the uh, the adapter from the Godox. Now, as you can see from this, uh, there's nothing that can be attached to it. So we need to adapt it, DIY a solution so that we can do that. And it's easy. We take our step up rings and we just place it on top like that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a glue gun. And I found that the glue gun is the best solution for this because the glue doesn't damage the equipment and you can easily peel it off. 
Now, one thing we need to test is um, this area here around the adapter is the running part where your flashes go around. So I need to put a flash on there to make sure that it's clear and that it will just go all the way around. That's it. That is now done. Now we can fit that to our camera. There we go. And that's what it looks like. So let's put the flashes on. And I'm going to take you through this step by step so you can see the difference in the lighting of this setup. Okay, ignore the hurt, the cold shoe on that. That's for a different lighting setup that I'm going to cover in a couple of weeks. Very, very small setup. It's half the weight of this particular setup. So anyone who likes a small and light setup, subscribe because I've got a really good setup coming up for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a simple subject like these uh, pins. I'm going to take a picture of it with the setup out of the box with no diffusion so you can see exactly what it looks like. So you can see the harsh shadows that that is causing. So we need to diffuse those shadows so they look nice. The first thing we want to do is take our diffusers that come with the flash. And we're going to pop those on. Ignore the Velcro strips. That's for one of the last steps in this build process. There we go. So that setup will give you this result. Same setup. We can see how the shadows are slightly more softer. Next, we want our Crafty Bells diffuser. And this one, they sell a lot of different diffusers. This one is simply the Twin Macro Diffuser. That's all you need for this setup. Again, the links are in the description for all the gear that I'm using. So we have that, okay? What we do now is we're gonna take our flash heads, move them up to the top. Now, this was the problem with the young Noah, your flash heads are too close to the diffusers, causing hot spots. You can see that in this image here. You can see how you have two little hot spots in the spider's eyes. That's what's causing that. All we need to do is just pull them back a little bit, like that. And what happens is the flash will go off. The light comes from the flash, goes into the diffuser, and it lights up the diffuser. It's actually the diffuser that lights up your subject. Now, here's the same scene again, lit with this setup. Now, you can finish there if you want to. If you want it simplistic and you don't have to carry a whole bunch of stuff around, you can go with this setup and it will work brilliantly. But if you want to just improve it a little bit more, you can create some bounce cards. This is just two sheets of paper with some foil on it. I've stuck some Velcro on there. They then, then stick on top of my flash. giving you that. And obviously it's a bit of a DIY solution. If I carry on using this setup, obviously I will create a better version that may be out of a PVC or something like that, some sort of hard plastic. But that is the setup and here is the results here from that particular setup. So I'm gonna show you the images now in order. This is with no diffusion. This is the diffusers that come with the flash. This is with the Crafty Bells diffuser, and this is with the Crafty Bells plus the bounce cards on top of the flash. And you can see the difference it makes in the shadows and the harshness of the light. There is another reason why I have the rings on the front here, because now those rings are there, I can fit filters to the front. So I can put a polarize on there if I want to. I can put an ND on there if I want to. But the main reason I have it there is so I can fit a Rhinox DCR 250 to the front of that, and that will give me another half life size times magnification on my subject. So now with this setup, I can get roughly two and a half times magnification. And I rarely go above three times magnification with my handheld setup. So this is a perfect setup for me. So the weight on my setup with the Young Neuro before was 2,871 grams. This new setup, because we are eliminating all the wires and the small rig arms, only weighs 2,635 grams. So we have reduced the weight slightly. But that is how I am diffusing my Godox. I think initially I might go without my bounce cards and just go with it like that. I think it's giving great results. Here are some images that have been taken using this exact setup. And again, being able to put the DCR 250 on the front of it like that has practically eliminated the need for me to take the Canon MPE 65 millimeter out in the field because I no longer need it in the field. Not when I have the two times lower lenses along with the DCR 250. 
Now I need to refer to my notebook here because the setup does come with a few downsides, a few little drawbacks. One of the main drawbacks is because you've got all this rig at the front, you are losing working distance. But that's something you can configure to yourself. I've got like five uh, step up rings on here. You can use just two or three. If you've got no need for any filters or any adapters to go on there, you can just glue the Crafty Bells diffuser directly to your adapter if you wanted to. The other problem as well is the more diffusion you add to your light, the higher the power is needed coming out of the flash. So with no diffusion, on a simple scene like this one here, I can use the minimum power of 1, 1 228th power on my flashes. With the standard diffusion, that gets cut in half to 1 64th power. With the Crafty Bells bonnet, with the flashes going directly through it, that's where you get them hot spots, I require 1 32 power on my flashes. And with this whole setup like this, I need 1 16th power minimum at ISO 100, and that's at F9. So again, you can play with your camera settings to adjust that. I can put my ISO up so that I'm not using much power. But again, these hold a lot of flash shots, 500 full power shots, according to the website. I still haven't tested that. But again, the more diffusion you add, the more light you have to pump out. So if you want a quick recycle time, you've either got to put your ISO up, your f-stop down, or reduce the diffusing on the front. But this is now going to be my setup of choice in the studio and out in the field for the foreseeable future. So that's it. That is my new two times macro setup for the field and the studio. So far, I'm loving it. The flashes haven't missed a beat. And again, you know how I love the Crafty Bells diffuser. So what do you think of the results? Let me know in the comments below. If you're looking to replicate this setup, again, all the links to everything here is in the description. But that's where I shall leave it. My name is Stuart Wood, and I'll see you on the next video. Most of you know it, but in case you don't know, it's an EOS R with a battery pack. We have the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I almost got that done. Yeah, I almost had that done. There's a link in the description. <laughs> and then of course we'll put on the adapter. No, we'll drop it instead. Now there is another reason why I have this here. The, uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could get the bloody thing out. Diffuser <laughs> directly to the adapter if you wanted to. If you've got. Sorry.